So far, we have a pretty boring game where all we have are invaders. Now, let's add two more crucial ingredients to our game, a player and a bullet. As always, with interactive applications, the main thing is to decide what a world is. In our current game, a world is just a list of posits because all we have are invaders, and each invader is represented by a posit structure. So to add a player and a bullet, a reasonable way would be to change the data definition for a world to be a structure that has three parts. Let's make this structure. Let's call this structure a world, and it's going to have three fields, invaders, player, and bullet. So now, in the data definition, we use make world, but then to finish the data definition, we have to say what a player is and what a bullet is. What is a player? Again, we have to ask the question, what both matters and changes. The player has an X coordinate and a Y coordinate, but if you play the game, you'll see that the player never moves up or down, only left and right. So the player's Y coordinate never changes. So even though it matters, we don't need to represent it. We don't need to store it. All we need to store is the player's X coordinate. And that's just a number. So let's just put number for the player field of the world. But it's a little confusing if you just look at these two lines to know what that number is. Maybe it's, I don't know, how long the player has been playing or something. So it's good to add another comment to say how to interpret this number. So we might write an interpretation note like the player is at the given x coordinate and the bottom of the screen. That would be a way to clarify what we mean by this number in the player field. What about the bullet? Well, the bullet definitely moves both vertically when it's flying and horizontally because the player could decide to shoot the bullet at different x coordinates. So we definitely need a posit, but that's not enough because here's something else that matters and changes in the game about the bullet. Sometimes there is a bullet, sometimes there is no bullet. Now, if you play the game as I did just now, uh, you'll notice that a challenge of the game is that you can only have one bullet at a time. So if there's a bullet that is flying, you don't get to shoot another one until this bullet either hits an invader or uh, goes off screen. So we can either have one bullet or no bullet, but not multiple bullets. So we cannot just use pausing to represent the bullet because then we would not be able to represent the case where there is no bullet currently. So instead, we have to use a union. And you might already have seen this union. It's called a maybe posin, and there are two kinds of it. Either there is no bullet, in which case, let's use a structure with no fields to represent that there is no bullet, or it's just a posin. Okay we are going to use a maybe posin to represent the bullet. By the way, another way to represent a world would be to consider a world with a bullet and a world without a bullet to be two kinds of worlds. So instead of having a structure data definition for a world and a union data definition for a maybe posin inside the world, we could just write a world is one of two cases. So you can imagine in one case, the bullet is idle. There's no attack going on. So in that case, all we have is a list of problems, that's invaders, and the number, that's the player's x coordinate. And in another case, there's 
is a bullet flying, so we would have to have a possum. These are both reasonable ways to define what a world is. We could either say a world is a union, or we could say a world is a structure, one of whose fields is in turn a union. It turns out that the first way, the way I started with, gives a little bit less work for um, designing the game, but really both ways would work just fine. So we're going to go with the top way, the, the way I started with, but I just want to um, note here that the other way is also perfectly reasonable. Now we have written two new data definitions, one that you may have seen before, a maybe posin, and one that is new, a world for our game, now containing not just invaders, but also a player and maybe a bullet. Remember that whenever we write a data definition, two helpful things to do are to write examples of the data and the template for processing the data. So let's start by writing some examples. We can start building up from a maybe posin. What are some examples of a maybe posin? Well, one example would be for the first kind of maybe posin, the make none kind. That's fairly easy. Let's call it B1 for bullet one. We can just basically copy that case from the data definition. It's almost as if this case of maybe posin is kind of an enumeration. The second case is a little bit more complex because we don't just have a single posin, there's an infinite number of possible posins. So let's just make one, here's one. Maybe that's where the bullet is. So we've written two examples of maybe Parson, and it's easy to write more. Let's then write some examples of a world. Well, for each world, we're going to need some invaders, some player X coordinate, and some bullet. Happily, we already have some examples of invaders, some examples of list of posins, because Whoever wrote the data definition for a list of posins already wrote some examples for us to use. These are called PS1, which is a list of just one posin, one invader, and PS2, which has two posins in it. So we could use these examples of list of posins in our examples of worlds. So let's define W1, which is our first world example, to be make world because that's what the data definition says and then um, why not use ps2 uh, i'm gonna need a player number maybe i'll use 80 um, and uh, let's use b1 which by the way is no bullet so that's a world here's another world uh, maybe this time i'll use ps1 which only has one invader in it um, maybe the player has moved to x coordinate 100 and uh, the bullet is b2 say. Okay, so we've made two examples each of maybe posin and world. That's the first of two helpful things to do whenever you have written a data definition. Another thing to do is to write the template for a function that processes a maybe posin and also for a world. That's your next exercise. Remember, when you do this exercise, to pay attention to differences between the maybe possum data definition and the world data definition. In particular, notice that a maybe possum is defined with one of in the data definition. The world is not defined with one of. In that sense, there is only one kind of world, but there are two kinds of maybe possum. So in your template for processing a maybe posin, there should be a cond, but in your template for processing a world, there should not be a cond. Another thing to notice is that the data definition for a world refers to the data definition for a maybe posin. So your template for processing a world should also, in the corresponding place, refer to the template you write for processing a maybe posin. Enjoy!